<clears throat> Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy Green Pastures Farm. I'm actually on the new farm that we just uh, started working on, and uh, this is part of a work in progress. Um, it was that many years ago, not many, two years ago. <laughs> it was corn, beans, corn, beans, corn, beans, and um, this farm goes back to uh, 1876. The owner, I don't know, it'd be his great, great, maybe great grandfather, homesteaded it, okay? Um, he's putting it back together now. It's all been sold off in chunks, and I think there's, uh, I don't know, right at 200 acres. And um, anyway, he just put another 50 to it, so I think it makes it 200. And uh, the boys in our fencing it with our timeless, uh, we're using the, the Paraflex wire and uh, their insulators, crimps, sleeves, everything. We got the whole Paraflex bundle put together out here. And uh, we just got our first fence put in. It looks unbelievably awesome. And uh, I wanted to show you the forage out here. Why well, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit excited about what I see out here, <laughs> folks. This hasn't had animals on it for probably 50 years, and uh, we're gonna run water on it. He's got a drilled well. I've already drawn up the water plans. It's gonna be cool. Uh, I'm gonna bring you all along on the journey as we get all this infrastructure put in. So anyway, look at this. This used to grow corn. And he uh, basically told the corn farmer he didn't want to grow corn anymore two years ago. And so it went fallow and he drilled fescue in here. I believe it was two springs ago. Well, the first year he drilled it, it was dry and he didn't get much of a stand. He's like, well, did I waste my money? And I'm like, absolutely, you did not. I mean, look at this. Yeah, is there some bare ground in here? Absolutely, there's gonna be until we get animals on it. See this? There's a little bare spot in between those big old clumps of fescue. But the fertility out here is through the roof as far as topsoil. This is prairie. This is prairie ground. And it's from here all the way to the Iowa border is prairie. It used to be big blue stem, and now it's crop, 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 crop. And I just talked to a guy today, actually yesterday, he came and bought some heifers. And he said, Greg, we used to have seven to eight foot of topsoil in southern Minnesota. And I think he said they're down to eight inches. I heard that seven and a half seven feet four inches of topsoil go folks is our farming practices we're losing our topsoil as a nation it's leaving and it's not coming back we need more of our land in grass like this we don't do we need grain absolutely people like to eat grain that's fine but you know uh, i think we're overproducing i mean a very good point in to look at, look at the price of corn this fall. And he went from 360 to 380 a bushel. I can remember when it was that price 20 years ago. Or even longer. We're overproducing corn, so it's not worth anything. It costs, was it, on inputs, it's like four to five dollars a bushel in input cost just to put corn out. And you're getting 380 a bushel? Hmm. But I guess where I wanna go with that is, with this type of uh, farming, we're building biological wealth. So when we bring in the ruminants, once we get the fence done, we're gonna get this all paddocked up. As far as some high tensile wire out here, just single strand, high tensile wire. These draws will be following the edge of them. Each one of these big ridges will have a frost-free tank in the middle of it with a couple quick couplers so we can just continually rotate our animals through here. And then there's a creek way up there by those dark clouds. 
and there's another 50 acres on the other side of that creek and it's it's nice it's nice it just needs it needs water it needs fence but the landowner's committed to it and uh he's a little bit like i am in the respect that he wants it done right he doesn't want to do it twice um folks this is what happens in missouri when you have bare ground look at this that's cracks it just cracks open when you have bare soil but where you have the fescue holding the holding the soil together there is no cracks but i like what i see out here i mean we haven't had any animals on it yet there's a white clover this little guy down here is the white here's a red clover the big one uh, there's orchard grass in here of course the the fescue uh, i've seen some bluegrass and the owner is all about going and put he wants to get some uh, warm season grasses in here so we're probably going to try and uh, drill some uh, big blue stem and just see i wouldn't be surprised if we graze this correctly not if we will um within seven to ten years we will see big blue stem coming up in here just from the seed bank um this stuff i see here in front of me that's an annual that's foxtail anytime you use crop and you have bare soil mother nature's going to cover it with foxtail or ragweed or cockleburs or canadian thistle all the stuff that we don't want but i'm excited about it. this is all this is all going to fill in all this stuff you see here where i'm pointing at my finger that's all going to fill in with good grazing man and the cows come in here and start trampling and open uh breaking the soil capping planting the seeds look at this see this is red clover look at all the seed on there that one plant's probably got 500 seeds because each one of those i've counted as many as 47 to 50 seeds in one seed head oh my gosh there's 20 seed heads on that one plant so we got a look at that it's all in here so we're going to get a really nice seeding naturally and the landowners didn't have to open up their pocketbook to put that seed down. It's natural. We just need animals in here to trample it. But, yeah, this is going to be phenomenal. Right now, the plan is, if we can get it fenced and get the water in, and that's a big if. It all depends on the weather and uh, my schedule, as far as other things besides farming. <laughs> I have to apologize, folks. There's a lot of people wanting me to do podcasts and all these, which is fine. But sometimes there's just not enough time in the day to do all that. Because the farm has got to be done. The farm comes first before podcast. Um, but look at look at this. I mean, it's just beautiful. We're in drought. We were. This is all grown without any rain, folks. If we'd have had any rain, I'd probably have this fescue up to my waist. I mean, this is going to be crazy. We're going to be able to grow a lot of grass out here. So why do I get so excited about regenerative agriculture with ruminants? It's because it doesn't cost a lot of money in the form of that fellow over there that owns that cornfield. And he's running a 250 to 300 horse tractor with duels on it, burning 10 to 15 gallons of gas an hour. Uh, he's got a million dollar combine you know, with a 32 foot header on it. And the list just goes on and on. All the input costs to get that crop in. Yeah. What input costs have we got here? Well, we got a fixed cost. You got your fence and your water. But after that, uh, it's a roll of poly wire and an ATV. That's right, an ATV. And an, you wouldn't need the ATV if you didn't want to. We just like them because it makes us more efficient. And we have a lot of ground to get over. So we use them. But starting out, I didn't have an ATV. I just had a backpack. But you young folks out there thinking about going off to college and going in debt, I'm going to tell you straight up. 
learn a skill, learn regenerative value, learn how to take care of livestock, learn grazing, and you've got something you can take with you the rest of your life. And you're not gonna have a student debt, you're not gonna be looking for a job. There's people looking for you folks. I get emails every week for ranch managers. There's people looking for somebody like you. And some of them are even positions where you can work into land ownership and cattle ownership. That's right. I didn't talk about going and getting a $2 million loan. I'm talking about starting in working for somebody that's in their 60s. They don't have the energy they had. They're looking for a young fella that's got some energy or lady. And uh, there's opportunities. There's so many opportunities. Gives me cold chills to think about it. You think this is the only landowner in America right here that wants to take uh, previously dead soil and turn it into a thriving a thriving environment with bugs and worms and livestock tramping all this stuff all powered by sunlight no herbicides no pesticides no fungicides no sides very little fuel and guess what at the end of the day you keep the money in your pocket it's all about making a living on the land folks Everybody's taking the money. All the input people are taking the money. And it's ended up in town. It's leaving the land and it's going to town. We got to keep it out here on the landscape. We're the ones doing the work. Why don't we get to keep some of it? Well, you absolutely can, but you got to get out of that crap over there. There's no money in that. If they took the government subsidies away from that farmer over there that's doing that crop, he wouldn't be making nothing. Zippo. Especially this year, 380 corn, come on. You're not gonna do it. You know what the definition of insanity is? You all have heard it before, I'll say it again. You do the same thing every year and expect a different result. I think I'm gonna stop right there. <laughs> Cause this is too good. This is too good. I mean, you'll wait and see what happens to this farm. It's going to be exciting. Are there some red flags here? Absolutely. There's some bare ground. We got a little foxtail here and there. But man, oh man, we've got a beautiful canvas here to work with. That's right. We get the water in here and get this fence up. Woo! Look out. It's going to be breathtaking. Folks, I'm going to get out of here. And uh, the boys are finishing up over here. We got to go do chores tonight. And uh, we'll see you all down the road.